Good morning, boys and girls. I am so excited to be with you again today on this beautiful Sunday. I just want you to know how much I miss each and every one of you and how much I think of you and how much I pray for you each day. And I pray that you are all well and having a lot of fun in your summer. Well, you know how we always start. We start with our prayer time, don't we? We have our four types of prayers, our adoration, I love you prayers, our confession prayers, where we tell God we're sorry, our thanksgiving prayers, where we tell God we're thankful for something, and then our please prayers, where we ask God for something, our supplication prayers, and ask him to please answer our prayers. Well, today, let's do our thanksgiving prayers, okay? And what do we need? That's right, our stuffed animal. I'm gonna count backwards from 10 and give you time to go and get yours, okay? Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome back, and now we're ready to pray. So we bow our heads, close our eyes, I'll start and you can finish. Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you so much for this day. And Lord, as we pray our thanksgiving prayers, God, we thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to get to talk to God? Okay, let's put our stuffed animals away. And I'm gonna ask our questions that we ask that are our Bible truths, okay? There are four questions. Our first question is, what word means God will always keep his promises? That's right, faithful. God is faithful. Our second question is, can we trust God only sometimes or all the time? You got it, we can trust him all the time. Our third question is, what word means God knows and sees everything we do? Do you remember? It's a great big word. The word is omniscient. Can you say that boys and girls? Omniscient. Our fourth question is, what did Jesus come to save us from? That's right, the punishment of sin. Remember, boys and girls, sin are the choices that we make to go against God and what God wants us to do, right? When we go against those things, that's what a sin is. And Jesus came to save us from the punishment of those sins. Oh, boys and girls, you are so smart. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever seen a magic trick? Maybe you've seen a rabbit pulled out of a hat. Or maybe you've seen it where they reach up their sleeve and pull out all kinds of scarves, different colors. Or they've pulled out a wand and all of a sudden there's a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Have you ever seen one of those? Those can be fun, can't they? Tricks like that at a magic show are fun. Or maybe you've had been tricked by mom and dad and maybe they said, hmm, let's go to the store. And you got in the car and you got all ready and then all of a sudden, where were you? You were at the park. Have you ever been tricked like that? Well, tricks like that, boys and girls, can be fun, can't they? And they don't hurt anyone. But when we try to trick someone to be mean or maybe to get our own way, that's not right, and that hurts God, and that's not what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to do that and hurt other people. Well, in our lesson today, we're going to see how someone did a trick, okay? And this trick that they did hurt others, and it also caused problems for the whole family, okay? Remember how Rebecca and Jacob Remember, Rebecca was Jacob's mom, and they wanted to kind of help God keep his promises. 
that Jacob would lead the family. Remember how they wanted to help God that way? So do you remember how they planned to steal the blessing since Isaac was blind? Remember, they tricked him, didn't they? And they made him think that Jacob was Esau by putting the skins on him and by having him feel hairy like Esau and confusing Isaac because Isaac couldn't see him. And they tricked Isaac from the blessing that was supposed to go to Esau, right? Do you remember how they did that, boys and girls? And that wasn't very nice, was it? And how did that make Esau feel? Do you remember how that made Esau feel when he found out that his brother Jacob had stole the blessing? That's right. It made him very angry, didn't it? Esau was so angry. Remember how he talked about killing his brother Jacob? And so Rebekah, their mother, didn't know she didn't want that to happen, and she didn't know what to do exactly. So do you remember what she told Jacob to do? That's right. She told Jacob to go on to his uncle's home and to go far away so that Esau wouldn't know. And she told Jacob to stay there with her brother Laban. So Jacob left, and he headed to the uncle Laban's home, okay? He went on to his uncle Laban's home to get away from Esau, okay? Well, one night on this journey, Jacob lay down and he placed a stone under his head for a pillow. And as he slept, Jacob had a dream. Now, the Bible tells us what he saw in that dream. Let's take a look at it. It's in the book of Genesis, chapter 28, and it starts in verse 12. And this is what he saw in the dream. Then he dreamed, meaning Jacob dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending, meaning they were going up, and they were descending on it, meaning they were coming down. So what did Jacob see in the dream? That's right, he first saw a ladder, didn't he? And where did that top of the ladder reach up to? Do you remember? All the way to heaven, didn't it? And who was moving up, ascending, and down, descending on that ladder? Do you remember who were on that? It was the angels, that's right. And the Lord spoke to Jacob in this dream. And God promised that Jacob would have land and he would have many descendants. Now, do you remember this word from when we studied Abraham and Isaac? The many descendants means that he would have lots of family and lots of children after him. And one of those descendants would be very special. And that descendant was Jesus. Do you remember that descendants are children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and great-great-great-grandchildren? Remember, it goes on and on. And eventually, one of those descendants would be Jesus. Hmm. Remember how we've heard those promises before? Remember, that's the same promise that God gave to Abraham and to Isaac, Jacob's father. And now God was passing this same promise on to Jacob. Now, Jacob, he left and he finally came to the city of Haran. This is where his uncle Laban lived, okay? In Haran, all right? And he also met Laban's two daughters. He had two daughters. There was Rachel and there was Leah, or Leah, okay? Jacob stayed with their family and worked for Laban. And after a while, Laban asked Jacob how he could pay him for his work. You know, when you work for something, you get a payment for it, right? And so Laban came to Jacob and said, how can I pay you for doing all of this work for me? Well, now Jacob, he loved Rachel and he thought she was just so beautiful. So he said that he would work for seven years. Is anybody in here seven years old? Not yet, right? That's a long time. And he said he would work those seven years for his uncle Laban if Laban wouldn't let him marry his daughter Rachel. And you know what Laban said? He said, okay. 
So Jacob worked for seven years taking care of Laban's sheep and his goats. But guess what? When the time came for Jacob to marry Rachel and they were to have their wedding, Laban played a mean trick on Jacob. Oh no, we talked about this, didn't we? Mean tricks are not right in God's eyes, right? Well, Laban threw a big party for Jacob and supposed to be Rachel's wedding, but Laban was very sneaky. And remember how sometimes you can think something's happening one way and somebody tricks you and does it another way? Well, Laban did exactly that. Now, was Leah the woman that Jacob wanted to marry? No, Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, didn't he? Because that's who he thought was beautiful and whom he loved. Jacob had married the wrong sister. The bride would have worn a veil over their face, just like in this picture here. So Jacob could not see the bride when she came down the aisle and came to him. And this was a very mean trick. It wasn't funny, was it? It was wrong for Laban to trick Jacob into marrying the wrong daughter. Jacob was so angry with Laban, but you know what Laban did? He told Jacob that he could marry his daughter, Rachel. He could marry her too, but he would have to work for him seven more years. Oh, that's a long time, remember? Well, what do you think about God's promises to Jacob? Do you think that God could still keep his promises even though Laban had tricked Jacob? Oh, he could, couldn't he, boys and girls? And you know why? Because God is sovereign. Do you remember that word that we learned a couple of weeks ago? Sovereign. That means that God is in control of everything. And we will see that God can still work everything out the way he promises, even though people sin. Well, looking at our flip chart again, Jacob stayed with his uncle the seven more years and during that time, his family grew and he had many children. Now, how many sons do you think that Jacob had? Two, maybe four, maybe six? No, boys and girls, ja God blessed Jacob with 12 sons. Huh. Let's see how many that is, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh-oh, eleven, twelve. That's two whole handsfuls plus two more fingers, isn't it? Twelve, twelve sons. That's a lot of sons. And remember the promise that God had told Jacob in his dream? God gave Jacob a lot of children because he had promised to give Jacob many descendants. Remember, he had promised children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren, on and on and on, many of them. And Jacob's 12 sons, they would grow up and they would have families that would grow into great, into a great nation, just as God had promised. Now, boys and girls, even though Laban had played a mean, nasty trick on Jacob, God was still in control. God made a promise to Jacob, and God would make sure that it would happen just as he said it would. And boys and girls, that is who God is. He is faithful and he loves you and he keeps his promises. God is going to do exactly what he says he will do. And boys and girls, one way we can find out what God wants us to do 
or the promises that God has for us, we find them by reading God's Word. So I want to encourage you this week to get your Bibles out, go to your mom, your dad, your grandmother, maybe your babysitter, and say, please read me some promises that God has made in his Bible. Because God loves you, and he is faithful, and God will always do what he says he will do. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great week and enjoy your summer. I love you. Bye.